Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. GDC was a while ago and there were a bunch of interesting talks, but they were not live streamed on their Twitch channel. However, right now you can find them all in a playlist on the Unity channel. I'm watching all of the talks right now. There's quite a bunch of interesting things going more in depth into various projects they announced recently. And of course, the talk most people really wanted to see was the roadmap talk, so here's my quick summary of it. Basically, it's exactly what people have been asking for. Lots of quality of life improvements, various performance and stability updates, and just general incremental updates. So nothing too earth shattering, but all of the things they have in progress are getting better and better. Honestly, watching this talk, my biggest takeaway is really just how much stuff Unity does. There's so many topics, so many use cases, and so many teams working on tons of different things. For me, I just make single player 3D games on my PC using URP and the latest LTS version. But Unity also supports 2D, multiplayer, HDRP, it has editor tools, VFX graph, shader graph, terrains, mobile consoles, ray tracing, dots, profiler, VR, AR, and tons, tons more things. Keeping up with all of those tools is actually one of the reasons why I decided to make my Ultimate Unity overview course. In there, I go through all of the dozens of Unity tools and features to see what they do and how they work. There's already over 50 lectures available in that course, but Unity has even more that I haven't covered yet, so I plan to continuing free updates for that course for a long time. So here, let's look at some quick highlights from the roadmap talk. But before that, this video was sponsored by Game Dev Guild. This is an online conference all about Unity game development organized by Jason Wyman. The talks are presented by various Unity experts on all kinds of topics, so you can learn about performance, getting a job in the games industry or going full-time indie, learn about VR, multiplayer, blend shapes, game audio, and tons more. You'll also have a chance to ask questions live and even win some awesome stuff. The conference is running from May 24 to 26 and there will be recordings after. Click the link in the description and register today. Okay, so the roadmap talk started off once again emphasizing the difference between the LTS and the tech versions. I actually made a video on this topic and it's one of my most watched videos. It can definitely be quite confusing if you just started using Unity, but after a 30 second summary it becomes super clear how the versions work. And just as I was recording this, version 21 LTS has just been published. Ideally, you should be using the LTS version in your projects, it's the most stable one. But if you want to see the cutting edge tools that Unity is developing, then those are on the 22 version. So then they talked about what were their core pillars for the 21 version making sure Unity has good workflows for everyone, regardless of your area of expertise, so making sure both hardcore programmers and designers can work together flawlessly. This was primarily by making visual scripting a built-in tool rather than an extra add-on. This one was a great addition to the engine. And speaking of that, just another quick plug, if you want to learn about visual scripting, you can check out my complete course where I make three unique games, all entirely using visual scripting. There's not a single line of code anywhere in any of those games. So that course really showcases just how capable visual scripting is. The course was made with Bolt, which was the original tool that they bought and then renamed into visual scripting, which is now built directly into the engine, but 99% of it works exactly the same as in Unity 2021. There's only been a handful of changes, which I also covered in another video. So that one was the big focus in 21, better workflows, visual scripting, and then also improved asset importing and a bunch more quality of life improvements. The other core pillar was faster to quality. This includes adding feature sets which automatically install a bunch of packages related to what you want to do, much faster to get up and running. There were also search improvements to quick search in order to make finding things much faster. The profiler was also improved as well as testing with the device simulator. Then URP and AGRP continue getting lots of improvements. Those improvements are present in the 22 and in the 21 version. And more and more platform support. So by now Unity truly runs on anything. You can make a build for PS5, a Xbox Series X and S, and even for Apple Silicon. So those were some of the additions and improvements to the 21 version, which has just had LTS. For me, I only stick with LTS, so I've been using version 2020 LTS in all my projects for the past year, so it's going to be nice to finally do an upgrade and look at all these new features. Then was the part about the 22 tech stream. Quite a lot of things they're working on right now, tons of teams working in parallel. Their main pillars for this release are these ones improved workflows and productivity, again just making everything smoother and easier to use with better and better iteration time, then also editor customization with the UI toolkit, so helping you make better tools to make better games faster, visuals that scale on anything, so making a gorgeous mail on mobile or PC or WebGL, 
Also improvements to game performance, the plan with version 22 is to get DOTS to 1.0 by the time the 22 LTS version is out, so if so, that should be awesome. Another great one is the Multiplayer Foundation, their netcode for game objects is progressing really nicely, so it's hopefully out of preview soon. And more and more platform optimizations, again making sure that Unity games run on any device you want. So looking at these pillars, I would say they definitely have the right goals in mind. If they achieve all of this in this year, then version 22 will definitely be epic. Then they dive a bit deeper into all of these topics. I'm just going to briefly go through all of them. If you want to watch the full video, it's linked in the description. And in that same playlist, you also find dedicated videos to some of these things. There's a bunch of talks talking about dots, one talking about the enemy CGI, another one about the Gigaia project and so on. So definitely check out that playlist after watching this video. Okay, so first up, there are improvements to the package manager, especially for more large teams, better compiler performance, and .NET standard 2.1 APIs. Also more search improvements and the ability to use API endpoints to make custom search windows, faster asset importing, play mode, compilation, build, serialization, and more. So lots of tiny things to make iteration much faster, much better. One big area of continued improvement is the UI toolkit, making it suitable for building editor tools as well as in-game UI. Now for this one, I'm very interested in having just one tool set for both of those use cases will definitely be hugely helpful. But at the same time, this one is also quite confusing to me. I still cannot quite understand what is the state of UI toolkit. I thought it was still in preview, but upon searching some more, apparently the latest package says that it's in preview. However, the reason why that one is stuck in preview is because it is now built into the engine itself. I think that's the case, I'm not 100% sure, but if that is the case, then in the 21 LTS UI toolkit is now production ready for editor tools, just not for in-game UI. So if I'm correct about that, and someone from Unity is watching this, then I would ask to add some sort of note on the UI toolkit package. It's the first thing that comes up on Google, and looking at the changelog, there's no mention of anything, so it makes it seem like it's an abandoned package, but it's obviously not. It's now apparently built directly into the engine, so that package is no longer used. So yeah, I'm still a bit confused with UI Toolkit, but anyway, sorry about that tangent. I'm looking forward to using just a single tool for building both UI and editor windows. I think that's going to be great. Continuing with the 21 roadmap, there were more improvements to both URP and AGRP. They also mentioned Gigaia. This is the project they're currently working on. Visually, it looks really awesome, and it's all made in URP. Basically, they have a team using URP in production and then giving their feedback back to the dev team, so everyone benefits. Also, one nice addition is custom post-processing effects. Right now, that's not really something you can do easily. I did do a video on one way that you can do that, so I did some research and I found a way on how you can make custom post-processing effects, but it's quite a bit of a hack, so having some proper support is definitely great. Then on HGRP, again, some more continued improvements. And again, they also have a team actively using the tool and giving their feedback to the dev team. You've probably seen the enemy's short film, it's truly impressive, gorgeous graphics. And the most impressive of all is exactly this. Everything that you see there is running on a vanilla version of the engine. Previous demos like Adam and the Heretic, those were gorgeous, but in order to work, those had tons of custom code to make it look so good. However, this time, all of the improvements they are making to get to this level of quality, all of those improvements are available to anyone using AGRP. So no custom code, everyone benefits. Then some more improvements to Shader Graph and VFX Graph. I haven't actually used them in quite a while. I haven't made any special effects in quite some time, but improvements are always great. Something really awesome in version 22 is the spline tool. If you need a spline right now, I actually made a video where I built a nice class and went through how all of the math works. And there's also a bunch of awesome spline tools free on the asset store, but still it's really nice to have a built-in tool. Then there are a bunch more terrain improvements, also a bunch of lighting improvements. And of course, Unity is both a 3D and a 2D engine, so lots of continued improvements coming to 2D. There's a better, faster sprite atlas, improvements to 2D physics, also lots of animation improvements, specifically for authoring 2D animations directly inside Unity, and specifically for using 2D bones. They highlighted their own Dragon Crashes demo. I looked at this one when it came out, it's really awesome, it's a great showcase of all of the awesome 2D tools that Unity has. And then something small but really awesome are the new templates. Right now if you go into Unity Hub and you select version 22, you can actually see the templates. Previously you only had an empty one with the built-in renderer, and then you had the URP and AGRP samples. 
So if you wanted a empty project with the 2D tools, you had to create an empty project using the built-in renderer, then manually install URP, then manually make the 2D renderer and so on. Whereas now you just have all of these various templates. So you have the 2D empty template, and when you do, it simply automatically installs all of the packages you need to make 2D. Then also a really nice 3D empty AGRP and URP templates. Again, just some nice, simple quality of life improvements to make your life easier and starting projects much faster. There were also more profiling improvements, especially for analyzing memory, really useful considering how garbage is always a problem. I haven't used the profiler much since I launched my last Steam game, which was almost three years now, but it's always nice to see it continuing to improve. When working on demos and quick prototypes, the prototype isn't really necessary, but it's definitely an absolute must when working on a proper big project. Then of course, one of the biggest things for version 22 is DOTS. The massive update to 0.5 has just released and the plan is to hit 1.0 during the 22 LTS. Personally, I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to see all of the new games that this tech will enable in the coming years. Something that a lot of people are always asking me for tutorials about is multiplayer. A while ago, Unity bought the ML API and they've been working on it under the new name Netcode for Game Objects. For me, I'm just waiting for it to come out of preview, and when it does, I'm definitely going to do tons of tutorials on it. There's already a sample game for this one. So if you're interested, definitely go ahead, download it, and look at how it works. And speaking of netcode, Dots Netcode is also in development, those two are different tools. Then also a bunch of platform improvements, some things for mobile, I don't really do much in mobile development, so I'm not sure how significant any of these are. For desktop and console, there's support for Apple Silicon, which is nice. There's the Linux editor and some WebGL improvements. Also ray tracing for PS5 and apparently Xbox coming soon. And of course, Unity also does both AR and VR. There's quite a bunch of improvements on there, verified support for OpenXR, Basic Interaction Toolkit, and more. All right, and that's the roadmap. As you can see, tons of improvements in tons of different areas. Nothing too earth shattering, just lots of improvements across the board. If you want more detail, definitely go watch the whole talk. But more than that, go check out all of the GDC videos in the playlist. I'm watching them all right now and there's quite a lot of interesting stuff there. You can learn more about Gigaia, about the enemies demo. You can learn about Unity Gaming Services, the trends for gaming in the future and so on. So lots of interesting info. And with this, my takeaway for the Unity roadmap talk is that Unity is currently great in the present and the future looks great too. So if they manage to do all of these things this year, then version 22 LTS will definitely be epic. And as some of these things start to come out of preview, like for example Netcode for Game Objects, the UI Toolkit, UI Builder and so on, as those have their full release, you can definitely expect that I'll be doing quite a lot of tutorials on all of those. And of course, like I previously mentioned, I will continue making tons of updates explaining tons of these tools and features for my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Alright, so that's the Unity roadmap for 22. Lots of exciting things coming up in the future. And don't forget to check out Game Dev Guild to learn from Unity experts. Click the link and register today. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.